When I play JRPGs, I try to focus on everything as much as possible. I don't touch my phone, I often wear headphones so nothing else distracts me, and try to really take in each story and world as much as I can, especially if it's something I want to review. There is, however, one side experience that I've realized recently that I enjoy as part of my gaming time, and that is the extrasensory experience that is whatever I'm drinking alongside these games. Outside of keeping hydrated this winter, I love the comfort of a warm drink, so before I sit down to play, I usually enjoy preparing a a nice cup of tea or coffee to go with the experience, and I've also realized I try to match the flavor of whatever I'm having to the game I'm playing whenever possible, whether it be drinking soda water after spotting a vending machine with them in Crisis Core, or trying to have Korean coffee any morning I could during Persona 5 Strikers. These flavorful experiences are something that I think can elevate a good JRPG, so I thought I'd share some of the ones I've indulged in recently or that I associate heavily with certain games. So with that, here are some drinks that I've enjoyed sipping through cutscenes that have added a little extra spice to my JRPG experiences. It might look like regular milk tea or coffee in photos, but during Trails from Zero, as soon as I saw the vanilla Olay recipe in the recipes list and knew I had most of what I needed to make it on hand, I had to try it as it sounded like a good pleasant drink to enjoy the game with. I didn't follow the game's ingredients list perfectly as I'm not sure where things like pure gelatin would fit into it, but after looking online at some recipes, I worked out I could do this pretty simply with just making my usual coffee, which at the time was instant either calf or decaf, and putting about a tablespoon of cream and two drops of either vanilla oil or extract in that would quickly get me to something similar that I enjoyed, occasionally with a little sweetness to make it extra fun. Vanilla is such a comforting smell to me, so it felt nice to sip on during my trails time, especially since there's a lot of reading to do in those games that gives plenty of time for keeping cozy with a sip of a warm drink here and there. I'm getting a little excited to try it iced and make it look more like the recipe picture when summer rolls around, but in autumn, I was happy my vanilla scented drink made my Trails from Zero experience a a little bit nicer, and I'll honestly probably drink one again soon, as just talking about it in this cold season is making me want to enjoy it again. While it is the cold season here, as soon as I spotted a certain vending machine in Midgard during Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, I wanted something cold and bubbly, which is more fitting I think for Crisis Core as it's not a super cozy game and its missions can pack a bit of a punch, so it made for a good way to keep hydrated as I explored this wonderful game. That drink ended up being soda water, as while you can't buy it in Crisis Core, one of the drinks in the vending machines in the city I noticed was something along those lines, and it became my sipper for this game, and I still associate the two a little since since it wasn't that long ago. I will say now that I think about it, I probably only actually did this a couple of times just by joining my boyfriend when he was buying ones for himself because I only really do these drinks if I have what I need on hand, but it's also really easy to find soda water, so I did this a few times I remember that was a good hydrating drink during my Crisis Core experience. Also in Crisis Core, there are vending machines for potions that they describe as an energy drink, which I noticed but decided not to partake in because I don't really drink them so much these days, but it also reminds me that aside from loving recipe lists like the ones in Trills, I do also love these little things on the map that give us real things to relate in-game items to. I doubt the next part of 7 Remake will have anything like this as they already have the potion machines, but maybe we can hope for something like this in 16, and I'll definitely be crossing my fingers for it as it's a good bit of fun when it's there. By Persona 5 Strikers, just like Joker, we'd very much learned that the main dish of the Phantom Thieves is curry and coffee, and when it came out, I was making a lot of curry anyway, as it's one of my favorite foods, and tended to last the week as you can make a lot of it. So that was one of my favorite things to do while playing Persona 5 Strikers in the morning before work as I played through its campaign. Thanks to this, I've loved the combination of coffee with spicy food ever since, and when I get the two together, it's often because of this fun morning experience I had with Strikers, so occasionally I look back on this time and I'm glad that was my breakfast routine. I'd love to try the coffee and curry combination again sometime, as while I don't eat as much curry and rice these days, I have gotten really into coffee and watch a surprising amount of tutorials and shorts on making various coffee drinks that is probably what led to this video, so since I can make better coffee now, I'm sure I could enjoy this combo even more, and since I hope to play more Persona 5 Royal on Switch, maybe I should for an extra nostalgic Persona 5 experience. 
Does anyone else have the problem where they see a beautiful gold liquid in a nice glass with a round or square piece of ice and instantly need to have one themselves? I certainly do, and in games like Yakuza where the bar is one of the game's main settings, I can definitely recall times where the character was having a drink and I decided I needed one too. It's probably not a healthy habit, but it is nonetheless one I definitely did with Yakuza and was very tempted to do it in certain locations in Trails from Zero, but I also don't regret this habit as it taught me how to make old fashions, which is a skill and a drink I still enjoy having on occasion. These days though, I am actually refraining from drinking to support my boyfriend through a no drinking challenge, and depending how long this goes, I've also found substitutes for gold pretty drinks in the form of iced tea, specifically Mugicha, that still tastes pretty good with the same other ingredients for an old fashioned that can help me keep this tradition going if I really want to. I'll be keeping that in mind for when the next Like a Dragon game comes out this year and beyond as it's definitely better for me, and with my circular and meal ice balls always waiting for me in the freezer, I'm looking forward to whatever the next game is that makes me pull them out to help me enjoy another beautiful golden drink with. These last couple of drinks are things I more associate with certain games than I drink these days, but I've still been wanting to share them for a while as I find it interesting that they remind me so much of these games that I think maybe says a lot about how powerful sensory experiences really can be. The first is a more positive association, which is chai tea that I still love to this day as a big fan of cinnamon, and when I indulge in this nice drink that I drink less often these days for some reason, I think of Final Fantasy XII as that's what I was playing when I first got into this drink. It's funny because these days they both kind of remind me of the other. When I think of Final Fantasy XII, I think back to the 11 p.m.s where I'd still be awake and my mom would come into the kitchen near where I used to play and ask if I wanted a cup of tea. She'd make me a chai, sometimes with milk, and I remember each time thinking how happy I was to be sipping tea and playing Final Fantasy. This experience must have happened a bunch of times as I always think of the two when I encounter either of them, so whether I get some chai soon or see Final Fantasy XII on the shelf near my desk, I'm sure I'll think of the other as it's so ingrained into my Final Fantasy XII experience that I actually think of chai tea before I remember that I need to finish it. The last not-so-positive association I have is more of a story than a ritual I did while playing, but ironically, I kind of associate the two in the same way I do as chai in Final Fantasy XII, and while it doesn't hurt my enjoyment of this drink, it does remind me of a game I didn't enjoy so much whenever I see a certain bottle. I'm talking about bottles of red wine and the game Little Witch Academia Chamber of Time, the one game I can say that probably drove me to drink. I'm being a little dramatic here, but more than playing the game, which I seem to have mostly blocked out, I remember the day I finished it and going to get some dinner stuff for spaghetti, which involves me getting some wine to give that sauce that extra something. Once I was back home and cooking, I distinctly remember thinking back on the game as I was cooking, thinking about how much I disliked it and taking an incredibly large swig from the bottle as I thought on what on earth I had just spent 25 hours on. I don't know if it was a really legendary swig or the game was just that bad as I haven't played it since, but I do look back on that moment sometimes and find it amusing as I haven't done this for any other game since. These days, I don't think about the Little Witch JRPG much, nor do I really drink much red wine, so maybe because of the infrequency of both of these things, I now associate them with each other whenever I see one. I hope to find a more positive memory to associate red wine with at some point, but right now it's this, and like all these drinks, I still find it incredibly interesting that I mentally pair these things together, and that JRPGs and certain drinks have the power to leave such a lasting impression. I'm sure I'll find another drink combo in whatever game I play next that has a recipe mechanic, and I hope you guys found this interesting and it makes you think about the extra experiences that make up your JRPG journeys too. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what your drink pairings are for when you play JRPGs, and let me know if you enjoy any of the things I've mentioned on this list. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here, and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below, and until next time, thank you, bye!